Welcome to our Blender tutorial series about sculpted prints. I assume that you are new to Blender, and maybe this is even your first attempt to make 3D artwork. So I will guide you through the process of creating a sculpted print in easy to follow steps. I have chosen to create a top hat. This is not a very complex task, but I can show you many important details about modeling and texturing. At the end of this video you will know the most important concepts about Blender, Sculpted Prings, and about the Primstar tool which I will introduce now. I assume that you have already downloaded and installed Blender 2.49b, the current stable release. And I assume that you have downloaded and installed the Primstar tool from the Domino Designs website. We have already covered these preliminary steps in our basic Blender tutorials. And please take your time to watch our Blender Primer tutorial at least once. That will help you to find your way through this video. You can find all mentioned tutorials on the Machini Matrix website. We will use Blender's plain and simple out-of-the-box configuration here. I will modify the configuration later to optimize Blender for the creation of sculpted prints. So let us first remove the default cube by pressing X and then click on Erase Selected Objects. Now we are ready to create a new object by pressing the spacebar on the keyboard and then Add Mesh Sculpt Mesh. A dialog opens where you can access a set of parameters for your Sculpty. The most important parameter is the base shape to be used. You can choose among six base shapes and a couple of more complex predefined shapes. Since we want to create a top hat, we will select the most natural starting shape here, a cylinder. For now keep the other parameters with their default values. We will come back to them later. But please note, that we are working with 8 faces in X, and 8 faces in Y, and 2 subdivision levels. We will see later, what that is about and why this is one of the coolest features of Primstar. Ok, it is time to click on the build button and create your first Blender object. You can use the middle mouse roll button to zoom in and out. This pinned outline of the object tells you that it is currently selected. You can hold down the middle mouse button and drag the mouse to examine the object in the 3D space. As expected, it is a cylinder and we want to modify it now. So let us switch from object mode to edit mode. You can do that in the mode selection menu in the bottom line of the current screen. When in edit mode, you notice a few more interesting things here. First, you see a mesh made out of 9 octagons stacked on top of each other. This corresponds to 8 faces in X and 8 faces in Y. If you selected another set of values in the Add Sculpty menu, you would now see a different mesh configuration here. You also see the cylinder rendered as a smooth object. Indeed the mesh is used as a set of control points for the cylinder. The number of vertices on the cylinder controlled by each mesh point is determined by the subdivision level. Each level adds a factor of 4, hence with two subdivision levels, each mesh point controls 16 cylinder vertices. For now we just work with the control points. We will learn later, how to take more control, even full control over each individual vertex of the cylinder. For now we are happy with just modifying the control points. Ok, the first thing we need to do is closing the top of the cylinder. For this purpose we switch to front view. You can do that in the view selection menu in the bottom line of the current screen. Now I deselect all vertices of the mesh by pressing A once. Now I want to select the top vertices. Press B to open the border select tool, then click the left mouse key and while holding the mouse key down, drag the rubber band around the vertices which you want to select. When I now release the left mouse key, all unclosed vertices get selected. Now I will scale all vertices down to zero. Press S. 
Then drag the mouse towards the center of the selected octagon. As a shortcut simply enter 0 on the keyboard. Now the cylinder top is closed, but we want to make the top more flat. I go back to front view, and then I grab the selected vertices by pressing G, followed by Z. Now I can move the vertices along the Z axis, until they align with the next lower octagon of vertices. So we are almost finished. We only need to model the bring. I select the bottom row of vertices and scale them up a bit. Again I use the border select tool, by pressing B, left click, drag, and release the left mouse button. Then I scale by pressing S, then drag the mouse, and left click again. Finally I move the whole set of selected vertices a bit upwards to align them with the next higher row of vertices. Finished. Now we need to know how this object can be transported to the target system, namely Second Life. The answer is, we must create a sculpt map. A sculpt map is a 2D mapping of the vertices in your object. This mapping is calculated by Star and automatically translated into an image. And this image can be accessed by use of the UV image editor. All we have to do now, is to configure a split screen and open the UV image editor. This will become very handy in the course of this tutorial. Move your mouse button to the upper part of the screen until you see a double-headed arrow key. After pressing the right mouse button a small window appears. Select split area. A vertical line appears and follows your mouse movement. Move the line around until you have found your preferred split point, then click the left mouse button. Now you see two windows showing the same content. In the right window go to the window type selector and choose the UV image editor. If the display is too small, you can use the middle mouse roll button to scale it up a bit. And now comes the magic part. Ensure that you currently are in edit mode. You can keep here, if you like. Or you can go to object mode now. Then go to render bake sculpt meshes. There just click on the bake button, leaving the default settings untouched for the moment. Your sculpty map appears in the window on the right side. And now finally open the image submenu and save your sculpt map to your hard drive. This map is what we have to import to our virtual world now. Note, that this image will by default be stored in TGA format. Now go to your Second Life viewer and import the just created image into your inventory. When you transmit the image, be sure, that you use lossless compression, otherwise your sculpted print might look a bit broken. Please take care about the stitching type of your sculpty. For the current object we will need to set it to Cylinder. Otherwise we will get weird distortions at the top and at the bottom of the hat. For our first attempt to create a sculpted frame, this result is not too bad, don't you think? But hold on. Look what happens when I take a closer look under the hat. Not good. The object is transparent from the inner side. The brain disappears. Now how can we explain this? Well, the reason is simple. Sculpted prints have only one side. Look here. These are four basic shapes for sculpted prints. The plane, nicely visible from one side, but fully transparent from the other side. The cylinder, the outside is okay, but the hole inside is invisible. The sphere in the terrace, these two are okay, 
but this is only so, because they do have only one side. The inner side simply does not exist, hence we see no problem here. So what can we do to make this cylinder work better in our 3D world? Let's go back to the moment where I create the brain. Now we select the second lowest row of vertices and scale them up, as we did before. And then we take the lowest row of vertices, but now we scale them down a bit. Finally we scale down the three bottom most rows and see, the effect is, that now we have modeled the brain with two sides instead of only one side. And now the hat also looks good from below. Please note that I have not fully closed the hat. As long as the hat is placed on a head, there is no problem here. Only if you intend to hold the hat on your hands, it may become necessary to model the full inside part. We are now at the end of this tutorial. I have shown you how to create a basic shape with Star, how to examine the objects, and how to select vertices with the border select tool, and how to scale them. You know how to bake a skelet myth, and how to export it to Second Life. And now you also know why sometimes parts of a skelty unexpectedly disappear, and what you can do in order to avoid that. In the next tutorial, we will proceed with a few more advanced modeling tools, and make this cylinder look more appealing. Until then, have fun! See you later!